begin with prayer. Father, thank you for the afternoon. Help us to um, learn many things from John chapter 17 today. Help us to be encouraged with thy word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so uh, um, this is, this is Graham. We're going to read verse, uh, verse 1. Okay, all right. All right. I'll do it. All right. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. All right, go. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life. To as many as thou hast given him. Okay. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely but I came out from thee, and had believed that thou didst send me. So, this is the, uh, the high priestly prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, we have, he says, in verse, in verse number one, we notice two things. The Lord Jesus Christ, he lifted up his eyes to heaven, and he told God the Father, Father, the hour has come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son may glorify thee. So, this is about the glory, the Father receiving glory, and the Son receiving receiving glory. Uh, in John 17, this is, this is the high priestly prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, not to be confused with the disciples' prayer. This is his prayer, his prayer of intercession, the, the high priest of prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, now, Jacob, are you still there? Yes. Okay. Good, good. Mr. Jeremy, there too? Anyone else there? Or not? Um, I thought I had someone else on the line. I guess maybe they, they, they went away or something. Just, um, you know, anyone else there on the line? Okay, good. All right, good to take you there. Um, hello, yes, you're still there. Oh, hi. Yeah, this is Jill. Hi, oh, I'm sorry, Jill. Jill. Hi, 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 Jill. I was following along. Oh, wait, you've got some reading, actually. And, uh, I want to have a copy of the quiz on you, but, you know, when the question comes up, you can ask me, and I'll just um, answer it. All okay, Jill. Now, uh, Jill, do you, um, do you have access to a computer right now? Um, yeah, I have to go to my uh, back room, but, yeah, I can go back there. And, okay, and, uh, yeah. do, you, do you have a printer that works or not? Do you have a printer that works? Oh, yes, I do. Okay, so the, if you want to get, if you want to just listen to that, I'd like to ask the question. They're pretty simple questions. Yeah. Uh, I do that where you can get the study guide online too. You print it out. It's um, yeah. you go to uh, bftbc.org forward slash John. You click on study guide. You go down to study guide 17 and click that one up. Uh, but I'm gonna ask Jill, Mrs. Grummer a question first, Jill, and I'll get, okay. I'll get to you soon. Okay. Yeah, sure. Good. I'm glad, glad you finally made it. Were you able to hear before or not on the telephone? Okay, so you were connected before the telephone, and you just didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Good. All right, super. That's great. Uh, Jacob, I have a question coming from verse uh, verse 2, John 17, verse 2. Uh, over what has God the Father given the Lord Jesus Christ power? All flesh. Of all flesh. And Mrs. Uh, did I skip you, Mrs. Grover? I'm sorry. Um, that's okay. I'm going to ask you a question, too. What is the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to give those that are given to him? Eternal life. Eternal life. This is this is this is a this is a very this is a very special promise. Eternal life. Now eternal life, you know, what, what what's the principle, Jill, of eternal life? What is eternal life, Jill? Um life forever with the Lord Jesus Christ in, in heaven and uh, being spared from the judgment of hell and uh, and eternal sense. That's right. Yeah, 
that phrase life that doesn't end eternal uh, the life we have in this earth is is temporal things we have in this earth are temporal you, know, you have you have different things that have lifetime guarantees lifetime warranties whatever you want to have you want to describe them things are supposed to last a long time but they 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 they, they, they still have a limit to how long um, how long they, they, they how long they can last uh, but as far as life is concerned I mean men and women children is, 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 is babies as soon as they're born uh, you know they they have in a certain sense they have a light eternal life not the same kind of eternal life that is being talked about in this verse because they they, they they're not they're not believers but they have life in some sense the, the point being of my what I'm trying to make is people are going to spend some place forever you know whether we need to have eternal death or eternal life right. but still when they have eternal death they're still they're still living you know, man is either going to be born twice or going to die twice uh, mankind humanity uh, they have that choice to make but here God the, the Christ the Lord Jesus Christ is communicating to God the Father all those that God the Father has given to him he is going to give those individuals eternal life everyone that puts their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be given eternal life it's a promise of scripture we have some sometime in the next um, next six weeks or so within the next six weeks perhaps we'll, 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 there'll be a picture up on the Facebook page of, 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 of firm hands grasped together you know and the, the idea of and it, you know we just picture it here you don't, you don't, we don't have to wait you look right here at this picture you know, firm hand, my hands aren't that, all that firm, but really strong hands of, of eternal life, of, of rather being eternal security. As far as, you know, we are in the Son's hand, God the Son's hands, and God the Son's hands are, are inside God the Father's hands. And so we have done more of a double security of our eternal life, a double security of, of, of our eternal life. And so in verse 13, the Lord Jesus Christ desired, pardon me, verse 13, verse 3, thank you, verse 3. In verse 3, the Lord Jesus Christ desired that his disciples, that they would know the only true God and the Lord Jesus Christ. That was, that was the desire that he had for them. And that's the desire that he has for us as well. When we think about his high priestly prayer, not only was he, not only was he praying for the contemporaneous people, the people that were living at the same time that he was, he was also praying for the people who were yet who were yet to be born. Those people, meaning us, and yet people that are yet to be born beyond today. As long as we have people that are being born, people that are living, people that are being, being trusting, going to be accepting Christ, until that first phase of the second coming, commonly known as the rapture, people will have. The iron will be, will be, would have been, have been prayed for, have been prayed for during this special time, this, this time of grace, this uh, this dispensation of grace. Now, Bill, I've got a question for you from verse number four. Uh, who did the Lord Jesus Christ glorify when he was on earth? Uh, he uh, glorified uh, the Father. He, he brought he brought glory. He brought glory to God the Father. That's right. Um, and so, and Steve, in the same verse, the last part of that verse is. What did the Lord Jesus Christ finish? What did he finish? The work which he did. Yeah, he finished the work. He finished the work that God the Father had set him to do. You see, part part of the part of the work, or actually the ultimate work, was was the plan of redemption. He came and he's right, he was right there. In John 17, actually, in, going into John 18 is a time when he's been he's going to be taken prisoner. And so this is the beginning of, his, of the time he's going to be, the process is beginning, whereby he is going to offer himself up on the cross of Calvary. Everything's, you know, then, then we have, he says he's finished the work in, in John 17, and later on in the book of John, we have him saying it's finished again. God, God, sent, him, God sent him to do a very specific work. I mean, the, the work of redemption, that was, that was the reason, that's the reason for the incarnation. That's the reason why God came, the Lord Jesus Christ came in flesh, came in the flesh to, to redeem mankind. And in verse, in verse 5, we have 
Uh, we, we have, um, the, the question is, and then I'll answer this question, at what point in time did the Lord Jesus Christ share the glory with God the Father? Now, there are many people, that some people that, that have, have taken a different position. They take a position that's contrary to Scripture. But he shared the glory of God the Father before the world was. Before the world was. And when we think of, when we, when we think of the, time, the time and place in history, the Lord Jesus Christ became incarnate, became flesh, this was, this was about 4, 000, approximately 4,000 years by, by Escher's chronology, 4,000 years after creation. And so, which means that, that any part of the sharing of God's glory prior to his incarnation would indicate his, his eternal sonship. When we think about different points in time. Now, this is perhaps very ab abstract thinking, but when we have points, you know, the points delineate between two, two things. Um, if you remember your geometry class. Now, when we have before the world began, when we think of infinity, you know, a, 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 a line that has, you know, two arrows on it, however we, however we want to think of it, that never, never ends. When you see Christ was even before the point on that line of, of infinity. He shared the glory of God before that time, before the world was. The world had a beginning. Matter what has no matter is not eternal. The matter of this of this universe, of this of this of this earth, you know, go beyond the earth, of the solar system, galaxies, and and the matter of this of, of what we have here that we can see, that we can touch. Matter that we can see, that, we, that we, we don't know it's even there, we can't see it. Matter we have not discovered yet, someplace out in outer space. All that matter had a beginning. And that beginning was when God created, when the Lord Jesus Christ created. And the glory, the Lord Jesus Christ shared the glory with God the Father prior to all that. Prior to all this creation, before the worlds began, He he shared the glory with, with uh, God the Father. Now, in verse 6, um, who kept the words of God the Father? Who was it that kept the words of God the Father? The man whom the Father gave Jesus. Is that the right answer? <clears throat> yes, those men he gave to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Those, see, no, notice who's keeping the words? Those men he gave to the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the ones uh, that are keeping the words. Those are the ones that are obeying the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who, yes? Who are exactly the apostles? The disciples. I mean, the, the apostles will be part of that group of disciples, yes. Oh, it's more than just the apostles in this chapter. I, I, think, it may, I think it may be go be, uh, beyond just the, just, the, the, just the apostles. I mean, I gotta understand. You know, it's not. It's. I, I would think it may be go beyond, go beyond that, but, but perhaps I'm, I'm mistaken. Go ahead. I was thinking about how many of them wrote the scripture in you know, the yes. New Testament. Mm -hmm. Does that is that included in this verse? Oh, it, it might be. I mean, there, if we have what we have here, that's, that could be part of it. Um, we have who, in verse. Let's look at verse, verse six again. I am manifest in thy name. That's the that's God the Father. Unto the men which thou hast thou gavest me out of the world. They were they became they came out of the world, these men. They were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. They it's all kept, Christians, isn't it? Yes, all it's all the tip to be we be all Christians, yeah. All believers, yes, all believers. Um uh, that's why we, that's why I use the word disciples. Disciples, um, being ones that are that are following and you know, obeying what God wanted him to do, the words of God the Father, obeying the words of God the Father, Old Testament words, Old Testament words. Yes, go ahead. So would that include us, Christians, born again Christians? Yes, it could. It could, it could, it could would it be would be including us, I suppose. You know, looking at looking at it by application and futuristic. Yes, Tammy, thought about that. I was just gonna say it was. It wasn't written to us, though, was it? It was more by application. By application. Right. By application, yes. 
application because you have, you have the Gospels are are that you know at that, that time we don't want to have to put put, our, put ourselves in the wrong group. No, it's the, the Gospels. We're still the, the events that are taking place here in, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are still Old Testament time period. Even though they even though we find them in the New Testament, the events that take place for the most part, with, 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 the, with the exception of, if, if you want to just discuss about the time of when law ended and when grace began in full, full, full force, you know, that, that's near the end of, of the Gospels, during the time of the crucifixion. When Christ, at, at the, at the, when Christ said it was, is finished, when that veil of the temple was rent in twain, there was no longer any need for the the time of law, and we have we have then we have the the the, the time of law going away, and then we, there's a, there's a brief transitional period until we have the time of grace becoming in full force. The law was no longer needed when Christ said it is finished on the cross of Calvary. When that veil was right from the, the, the from the top to the bottom was rent in two pieces. No longer. Was there any need for the Old Testament system to uh, to remain uh, intact? And so, uh, in verse seven, we're looking at verse seven. Something that the disciples learned was that all things are of God the Father. You know, they had they had learned they learned that they learned that from the Lord Jesus Christ. All things were from. God the Father, uh, no matter what, no matter what it is, and that, it's not that that way today. People today want to deny things, deny the fact that uh, God exists. They want to come up with, they want to invent new ideas about why they can do what they want to do. Uh, they want to be able to do things that are completely contrary to Scripture. Now, mankind is that, that, that are non-believers. They are dead in trespass and sin. They're, they're, going to, they're going to be doing what they want to do, no matter what. Uh, and they make it up whatever excuses they can to do it. Uh, but they, they, they're, they're, the God of this world has blinded their eyes. But you see, once you realize, once somebody realizes the fact, uh, and it, it, comes, it comes in different times, but once somebody realizes the fact that, that there is, a, acknowledges the fact there's a God and there's accountability, and then they'll start seeking for an answer. They'll start seeking for the Savior. Uh, See, verse 7, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. See, they realized, the disciples, finally, that of, of, of what, what Christ had, what came from God the Father. So what came from the God the Father. And when people today, they don't want to acknowledge the fact that God the Father exists. They don't want to acknowledge the fact that all these things that come, whether it's through Christ or through some of the source, they don't want to acknowledge the fact that God the Father exists. They want to. They want to have their own go in their own direction. They want to go um, in their own way. Now, Mrs. Weber from verse. A question from verse eight. Well, what did the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ receive from Him? What did they receive? The words which they all <coughs> gave us me. That's right. They received the words of God the Father. I mean, just like just like we had. In that earlier verse about obeying the word, they follow the words, they obey the words, they receive the words, they receive them. You know, we, we have the Bible, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. They, they, were, they were receptive of, of the words of God the Father. And so, take me from in that same verse, uh, from where did the Lord Jesus Christ come? From the presence of God the Father. That's right. He came from the presence of God the Father. You know, we have to stress the point of the eternal sonship of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, Mrs. Grover, go ahead and read verse, um, verse 9, please. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for thine. And all mine are thine. All right, Joe, go ahead, verse 11, please. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. 
while I was with them in the world, <clears throat> I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, uh, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now, and now come I to, to thee, and these things I speak into the world, that they might have my joyful, have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So, looking at these, um, these next, this next grouping of verses, we see here in verse 9 uh, who the Lord Jesus Christ was, was praying for. Uh, he says in verse 9, I pray for them, meaning the, 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 his followers, the disciples. I pray not for the world. He was praying specifically for the believers, the disciples, those that are followers of his. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. He's praying for those specific people. Uh, God the Father had given to him for salvation. All the saved people in the, in the past, in the present, in the future, the Lord Jesus Christ is praying for. Because God the Father has given these people to them. The people that have trusted and turned to him for salvation. We have God the Father praying for them. And again, this goes this 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 principle goes beyond our understanding. Is God is omniscient, which means he knows all things. He knows both the possible and the actual. The possible and the actual. He knows all things. And so and, and he probably goes it goes beyond that simple definition. Something somebody we can't really explain it. But he he, he knows all things. He's aware of all things. And so he's, he's praying for them. He's not praying for the, the world, it says in the verse, but he's praying for those people. Disciples? The disciples, the followers uh, of him, those people that have accepted him, those people that are turning to him. I mean, this, the disciples, the, those believers, just a second, see, are in the world, but he's, he's praying for this, just the ones that are trusting him. What's, what's your, the, At that point in time, were there... Uh, other believers besides disciples at that at that point. They they were they were the first ones. They were the first group. The first we started we said that the, the, the apostles and there were others that were, were, were the disciples that were beyond. Sometimes we, we either use the word disciple and apostle interchangeably, but in a strict sense we have apostle meaning the you know the twelve selected men that the Lord Jesus Christ picked when he was on earth. One of them. We see, we know, we, we, we were aware betrayed him and went astray and, and sold him for 30 pieces of silver. And then another one was selected after his death. After his death. And so when we have the 12 apostles, but the disciples, a disciple, someone that's a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, was someone that was following him and was trusting him, like the, 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 like the women who were there at the tomb at the, at the cross. The crucifixion, they were... They were followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. A disciple means a follower. Someone that's followers and someone believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not, not just followers in a in loose sense, but follows in a very strict, specific sense. Follows in a very strict, specific sense and wanting to believe and take take complete responsibility and embrace the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not, not just taking peace here, peace, peace there. Is that how to explain your question, Steve? Or? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. And so we have the the um, these people here. The he was he's thanking the Lord for. He's praying for them specifically, which again would include us. I mean, like like we were saying before, contextually, this is the gospels by application. By application, looking forward into the future, Lord Jesus Christ was was concerned about us, as as he was concerned about us as well. Yes, sir. Uh, Good. Mm -hmm. What you're saying on that issue for 
all believers in our past, present, and future. Yes. Uh, Testament believers, you know, that we're looking forward to Messiah. But this verse 20, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Yes. But, That's right. So that would, that would, we said it in the double Jacob. Sanctify them by the truth. Yes. By what is truth. So that's how our minds are controlled by the yes. word of God. I mean, in verse 15, pardon me, verse 7 of chapter 15, like you mentioned, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So having having the, the, the mind, the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ is very important. Um Tim, go ahead. That's what we'll ask for, will be what is according to his will. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to be meditating upon his thinking. Right. Meditating upon the word. Thinking like he would think. Uh, Jacob, in, in whose name, this is a question for, from verse 12, in whose name did the Lord Jesus Christ keep those that were given him? God the Father's name, that's right. And uh, in, in Job, following on with that same verse, who is the only one um, that was lost? He's kept everybody else, but who was the only one that was not kept, that was lost? Well, I missed what you said, Job. With the exception. Okay. But then if you look at the end of verse 12, the son of perdition. yes, but the, but the son of perdition, that's right. Of perdition, yes. 
None of them, none, none, none of them, it's with one exception. What's that mean, uh, perdition? <coughs> perdition, the idea of, of the one meaning Jewish, uh, pardon me, Judith, Judah, no, pardon me, Judas, meaning, thank you, meaning Judas. He, he is the one that was that was fitted for destruction, kind of ruined damnation. That's the idea of, of, um, of perdition. That's what perdition has the idea well, of meaning. Well, I'm a little confused. He's, he's he's this, what, what happened with Judas, uh, Steve? It's, it's, oh, he, he betrayed him. He betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, is there reasons behind it, or just didn't believe? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what Satan entered into him. The Scripture says. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure if he he was he was he was he stuck. He stuck. He, he abandoned until well, he, he denied and betrayed. But it, until the very end, he was there in the upper room. Uh, I'm not sure why Judas did what he did. I mean, I'm not even sure why the Pharisees and, and the scribes needed Judas to come and to identify him. It should have been obvious to them who he was. Um, Bill? Judas couldn't have been saved. Uh, must must have been uh, in the beginning for him possibly a head belief. Yes. But he couldn't have been saved because if he were truly saved, uh, Jesus would have been in his heart. And Satan couldn't have entered uh, into there. Today we have the Holy Spirit, uh, which uh, dwells within uh, the heart. The devil can't enter your body. He can influence us, tell us to do something we're not supposed to, or yeah. think something we're not supposed to think, but uh, but he can't enter into our hearts or into our bodies. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so, and so in, in verse 13, we see the Lord Jesus Christ desired that his joy would be in the, in the lives and the hearts of those that had trusted in him. Um, he wanted he wanted this this joy uh, to be be present in the lives of the disciples. The joy, his own joy, not some not joy from some other source, but his own joy. No, that was uh, Jesus Christ who was uh, entering uh, the apostles who uh, believed. Yes. At that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, before the Holy Spirit, at least that's the way I, I, it comes off to me from uh, sure. these pages. Right, I think that, that's they were pretty much sealed, uh, you know, uh, uh, because of uh, Jesus' promise to them. The disciples, yeah, the apostles. Okay, because he, he he promised he promised them, and they, he understood their hearts. He knew they believed. Yeah, and he gave them the promise about another Comforter too. In the, in the previous in the previous chapters about the other comforter, he had to go, so the comforter could come, not the comforter of a different sort, but a comforter of the same sort. Uh, that, that's what that's what he was he was doing. You know, that's why what he was giving to um, to everyone, to that that believed and would follow him. Uh, so in verse um, verse 14, Paul, uh, for what reason does the world hate the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because they hate truth. They hate the truth. And um, Jesus spoke only the, the truth, uh, and the truth came uh, from the Father as well, uh, was given to him, uh, and then the disciples uh, 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 abided by the truth as well. They put the truth in their heart. Mm -hmm. That's right. Follow up with him with it. I put it because they were not of the world. That's what I thought. Yeah. So they've actually been changed by the truth. So, I mean, so that made them not of the world, right? Right, right. Yeah, the disciples did themselves. People look at them, yeah. uh, did the people look at them not of the world? Yeah, they were changed so much that they they, they were hated by the world because they, 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 came, they came out of the world in a certain sense. They separated themselves oh, okay. from the world. They didn't want to be like the world. They didn't want to be like the world, and so they, they were transformed. And because of that, because they were different, that's why the world hated them. Because... They no longer wanted to be like everybody else. Just like today. Yeah. They wanted to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. hey, like, just like today. That's right. We, we, we don't, we don't, we should. Yeah, we're, Christians are hated. We need, we need to uh, avoid being, or like, we have to come out of the world. We don't want to necessarily be part of the world. We have to come out of the world. And, and, yes, Jake. I heard a preacher say one time that when, when you have, when you have the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, Yeah. I can't even stand commercials when I watch a regular news story. 
That's fine. It's a two edge, Jacob. And pretty much, pretty much, sometimes even new stars will get pretty disgusting sometimes. As well as we put that in mute. You know, just all you use a pair of scissors. Yes, please do. themselves from evil. He wanted them to be kept from evil. Because uh, evil is, uh, is, some, is wickedness, and he wanted them not to be destroyed by evil. Tim. When it says the evil, is that referring to Satan, or is that something? Or why, why is the article the there? In verse 15? Yeah, verse 15, at the very end there. From the evil. <clears throat> That might have reference. I don't know. There's a definite article there. That's good. That's a good, good question. Good observation. Um, Would it tell it in the Greek? I mean, usually when you have the presence of of the our article, you have that's that's identity identifying something. Mm -hmm. You know, the absence of its quality, whatever that's supposed to mean. But we have you have know, specific identity. Keep them from the evil. I mean, I'm not sure if we want to supply the word one here. Yeah. A supply, the evil one. But I think evil may go be, could be the influence of the devil, for sure. Right. It would include the devil and his, his minions. Mm -hmm. uh, Mom, follow up that one? I'm just trying to think of Psalm, Psalm 23 that is evil. And... I think it may, yes. You want to read the verse for us? I'm looking for okay. it. I don't know if I can find it. How good it is. Oh, I will fear no evil for the heart with me. Yes. Psalm oh, 23, 4. Yeah, so we, I walk through the that's good. Fear no evil. Mm -hmm. In Psalm 23. Uh, from in verse 16, Steve, um, who is not in the world? Who is not of the world, rather? The unbelievers? Um, who, is, who is not of the world? In verse, let me read verse, uh, read, read verse 16. Yeah, they... they. Or not of the world. Who are they? Is, he, is that's going back, referring to back to the previous verses, meaning the disciples. They're not of the world. So he's still, uh, at, from what I'm understanding, he's still praying to the disciples, right? No, he's, he's praying to the God the Father, and he's talking in the prayer, in the prayer about the disciples, about the Father, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. They, meaning they, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are not of the world okay. because that's why the world hates them. Remember from the previous verses? Go ahead. You thought? Well, see, when I came here, I would, after I studied this today, I thought this must mean the apostles. You know, all but Judas. Right. Mm -hmm. but I'm a little means... lost. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Okay, sorry. You say they are not of the world. It is, it... Even as I am not of the world. Second part of that same verse, even as I am not part of that world, that's where it identifies uh, Jesus uh, as being not being part of the world, and his disciples are not part of the world. Oh, okay, now I got to understand. Okay, okay got they are not. I was looking at the last part of the verse. Yeah, we got to like verse, yeah. verse 14, 15, and 16 to get yeah, the whole I, thing, I, plus I, the last part of it. Okay, we thought about that. Yes, I have still. So as I'm sitting here. I understand here, the verse now. Good, good. Because I didn't read the second part. Right, okay. Well, as I'm sitting here now, if it's not just the apostles, but then it would take in like the Marys and, and, and the people that loved him. Mm -hmm. Would they be his disciples? Yes. His followers? You know, the Marys in the Bible mm -hmm. and all the different people. And uh, can't come up with anybody right now. You might mean all the people, the people the that Lazarus. healed. Mm -hmm. Lazarus. But he, right. And uh, 
And so by extension, could we include us here in this By application, by application, yes. I think so, by application we can. By application, you know, because he was talking about, he was talking about the future as well. And then he's in his high priestly prayer. Are we in 19 yet? Not yet. We're, no. I think we're verse 17. We're 17. And so, the, the Lord Jesus Christ desired his disciples to be sanctified. In verse 17, it talks about being sanctified. That, that the idea of being, and that's, that's and by the means of God the Father, by the means of the truth that the God the Father has. That's set apart. Set apart. Yeah, sanctified means set apart. By God's truth, by the Father's truth. That's how people are set apart. And we find the Father's truth, God the Father's truth, in the Word of God. In the, in, in the, the Word of the Scripture. That's where you find His truth. And He desired his, his, his disciples to be sanctified through God the Father's truth. Mrs. Graham, we're going to read verse 18, please. And thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified to the truth. Either pray I for his own, for them also we shall hold on to their word. That, <clears throat> that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou hast gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved me as thou hast loved me. Father, I will do that also, who thou hast given me. <clears throat> be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And will declare it, and that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Now, in verse 18, we have we have the, the, the verses saying that God the Father sent God the Son into the world. And then we, we also are reminded in the second part of the verse that God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is sending the disciples, that the, he's sending the disciples into the world. And so there, there's, there's, there's a continuation of, 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 a, of a commission. God, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is fulfilling the, the will, the desire of God the Father, and he desires that the disciples fulfill his commission, his desire. And so we have God the Father sending God the Son into the world, we have God the Son sending the disciples into the world. Uh, one is the one that's providing redemption, God the Son is providing redemption for humanity, and in this case of the disciples, they're the ones that are proclaiming about what Christ has done on the cross of Calvary. He's, he's proclaiming the redemption that, that, that God the Father, that God the Son has provided already. Um, our mom, I've got a question for you from verse 19. For whose sake did the Lord Jesus Christ sanctify himself? Their sake. Yeah, for the sake of the disciples. That's right, for their sake. For their sake. And when we see... We look, we look at verse 20 here for, for a moment. Um, you know, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So these are people he's praying for who would yet believe, who would yet to believe, but they're coming. The disciples are bringing this message. The God the Son, God the Father said God the Son, God sends the disciples to bring the, the word of truth to different people that they didn't know who was going to accept it, who was going to reject it. But you see, uh, for their sakes, that they sanctified, that they would be sanctified by me. So he, Christ is also praying for those who shall believe, who were going to believe on him, who are yet to believe on him. Um, Mrs. Weber, question from verse 21. Uh, who did the Lord Jesus Christ want to believe 
They were sent by God the Father. Who did the Lord Jesus Christ want to believe? Look at the end of the verse. Yeah, I had trouble with that. Okay, maybe, maybe my question is not quite quite right here. And I'm trying to trying to focus on the last part of the verse there. Um, okay. He what he wanted. He wanted it says. One? Pardon me. He wanted them to be one and us. He did want them to be one, but the disciples. But if you look at the last part of verse verse twenty one. That the world 21, may believe that thou hast sent me. Right. That's right. That's he wanted he wanted the world to believe. And he was sent by God the Father. That was his desire. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody in the world would the best believe that or did believe that, but he wants them. It's his desire to know that. You know, kind of, he, he desires that. What was your thought about that? Did he, did he want the disciples, his disciples, all the followers, they really believed him to be so different that everybody would know that Jesus was uh, sanctified, whatever the thing is that he yes. sends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that they would know Jesus was real because of the lives of the of the disciples. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then and then verse verse twenty two. That's why. I'm sorry. That's a question. Go ahead, follow up a question. No, I was just noticing this about uh, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So uh, it's sort of like the thing about election here too, because if you believe. Then you're accepted in the beloved. Mm -hmm. So you know that's what that's the big thing to believe. Right, it is believe. I mean, see, the, but the point is, he wanted. If you notice here, if he wanted the he wanted the world to believe that he was saved. Yes. And so he's not limiting. Right. He's not limited in who he wanted to believe. You know, yeah, that's good. Just of that. you know, <laughs> it's not limited. And furthermore, he was looking at verse 27. He wanted he wanted the the, the, the the disciples to be receive the glory from God the Father. Um, that's the glory that the Lord Jesus Christ gave to the disciples, the glory that was from God the Father. Very, you know, special glory. Uh, and in Tammy, in verse, uh, verse 23, uh, what did the Lord Jesus Christ want the world to know? That God the Father sent him. That's right, that God the Father. And that he also loved them. Yes. We're referring to the believers. Right. Mm -hmm. And in verse 24, the Bible tell, reminds us that God the Father, and this again, that we talked about this before as far as... Oh, no, no, love, I'm sorry, love the world. Let's love them. It's yes. like it's referring back to the world. Right. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Oh, it's okay. I'm just correcting myself, and I interrupted you. So wait a minute. What was the answer for 23? Uh, verse 23... Uh, he was sent by God the Father. The Father. And, the, the, and I said, and the, the Father loved them. And the Father loved them. Because that so the next phrase there. Yes. And so when we think about the, uh, how long God the Father loved the Lord Jesus Christ, in verse 24, he loved him since the foundations, before the foundation of the world. This is the second time in this chapter that we have yeah. uh, the foundation of, of the world being mentioned. Oh, and, yeah. Yes, so Jacob. When we're talking about that in in chapter in verse five, I mean, yes, where was and you were talking about the eternality of Christ and yes. and Father and, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I'm trying to I, I remember there's twice, I believe it's twice just in the Book of Psalms where it talks about Him being from everlasting to everlasting, and also Micah five two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, from everlasting in, in the uh, the Greek. Wrong with so, that's right. Wrong with so. Mm. Yes, Where's ahead. the other uh, foundation of the world in the chapter? Well, it says before the world was in verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, okay. it doesn't use the word foundation. No, no it doesn't. It, but that, that's communicating. No, I know. Yeah. I know. It doesn't use the word foundation. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just trying to clarify. Yeah, if you're looking at the word foundation, you want to see it. Okay. But the, the, you see, you I see this I verse 5. Uh, and so, um, and sadly, verse 25, we're reminded. That, that the world does not know God the Father. The world does not uh, know God the Father. And so Jacob, in verse 26, why did the Lord Jesus Christ declare unto his disciples the name of God the Father? Why did he do that? I'll read it. 
Troker. I have declared unto them thy, thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Okay. So we wanted the love of that love to be in the disciples. Um, so Jacob, what are, some, what are some thoughts you have, more thoughts you have about verse, uh, chapter 17 here? Some thoughts from 17, maybe a favorite verse or some, some, uh, cross references, that you, more cross references that you noticed? Yeah, when, when you were making your first commentary. Yes, mm -hmm. And, and, uh, I have, in verse 4, I have glorified thee on earth, I have finished the work that God gave us me to do. And it reminded me of a Bible study we were in one time, mm -hmm. and, uh, Yes. And I heard your wife Tammy say that he fulfilled it by, by keeping it. By right. Keeping it. He fulfilled it and, and all the way to the cross and the, the death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, and that he proved it. That, that, that was so important to me because that, that, that scripture there is always kind of a. It's hard for a person not to try to mix the two things if you don't have a total idea of that, what she said, mm -hmm. what Tammy said. Right. comment she had there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was That's a lot of help for me. To, Good. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Rummer, uh, I guess I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Rummer, I should let you go first. Um, uh, but go ahead, go second here. <laughs> uh, verse 20. Yes. Neither pray I for these alone. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, uh, he was talking about the disciples. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we, had, we can take that as Yes, that's right. That's good. And Jill, what's something that you noticed from this uh, John 17? stating his mission and his purpose uh, on, on in this world. Uh, he's stating it very clearly so that everybody can understand. Mm -hmm. And that self is... Uh, right. <coughs> That's right. Very, very clear, is it? Very purposeful. You take it, right? There's a lot of people that call themselves evangelicals that are trying to use this chapter Yes, they do, don't they, Jacob? Mm -hmm. What? Are they for what they're doing right now. There's so much that's going on by people that <laughs> sound real, real terrible. He, he's talking about ecumenism and secretism. They're two different things. <laughs> secretism, bringing all sorts of things together. All sorts of religions together. And ecumenism, which is, which is a similar type of idea, bringing all types of religions together. They're, they're using, they're misapplying John 17. Mm -hmm. You know, they're misapplying it. You know, it's... It's, 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 it's false, it's, it's um, compromising churches, compromising people that we, we're talking about, uh, Steve. We're talking about secretists and ecumenists. Um, Bill, 
Right, right. Kind of fancy words. Or, they, they are fancy words. No, I mean, I'm new. I'm new. Yeah, but they're fancy for anybody, Steve. They're, they're fancy for anybody. I didn't know what secretism was. No. They're, they're fancy. I'm new, I'm new to this, I didn't so know all the either, words are so new. We didn't know that. So join the group. That's we didn't know right. what secretism we didn't know. was. I didn't know what secretism was. None of us knew. Probably Bill knew. So, so Steve, um... Next time you have to put the definition behind your word, Jacob. <laughs> Steve, you know, I, I just want to say one thing. Yeah, I'm sure. glad I've been going mm -hmm. here. Good, good. I could read this over and over and not understand okay. what's going on. Okay, I mean, it could, uh, this is a complicated chapter. It is. Here. It really mm -hmm. is. But what I got out of it is uh, verse 4 and verse 20 kind of go together. He finished his work, and now he's... Yes. Uh, uh, Praying for the, those to believe in his word. Yes, that's right. That's good. Mm -hmm. Mom, some thoughts, some thoughts you have there about this uh, chapter? Well, to be truthful, John 17 has never been my favorite chapter of John. Why? I can't understand it. To, I understand it better. Okay. I've heard people preach. I'm mm -hmm. going to Bible school. And all right, right. Stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I was surprised. It's pretty easy if you read it. Okay. But, but it's complicated. It's right? complicated. Yeah, yeah, the that's way, the way you ask question, the yeah. questions, mm -hmm. yes. we had to search out the, what, the verse. So we were forced to understand the mm -hmm. verse. Where before I read this chapter fast all the time. Because mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I thought it was above me. It's Jesus' prayer, and you know, I don't want to intrude on his prayer life. Okay. Something like that. I mean, this is the honest truth. I never came up with that but right, I, uh, I can't say it's my favorite chapter, but I understand it much better, and I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised what it's about. Yes. I mean, I'm, I, I mean, I'm surprised. That he's talking about his disciples. Mm -hmm. all that. I don't know. I thought it was so lofty. Even though, I guess when preachers present it, they, pre they probably didn't know what it was about either. So they preach what they... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to say that. Then I noticed... Um, so I'm glad we went through this. I still don't... I still don't understand. I understand it 500 times better. Mm -hmm. Good. That he was praying for his uh, disciples. Yes. Uh, were you talking about verse 17? I'm talking about the whole chapter. <laughs> the whole chapter, okay. verse 17. I, I think I, I got it. I mean, no, there's a verse in uh, chapter 1 Peter, 1 Peter 23. They go very forward as uh, okay. being born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth in a body of prayer. And I think that's so. That that's for people to come to Christ, and that's for people to grow in Christ. And, and he is, Christ is that incorruptible mm -hmm. seed. And the word of God is inseparable from himself. It, it's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's right. Further, go, further. So I, I'm still going on. Mm -hmm. um, so I have here, up here, a quote by Martin Luther that probably Pastor Waite quoted and I wrote down. Cursed to be that unity for which truth must be put to the stake. Martin Luther. So I thought, now what? why is that up there? So then I looked while you're teaching. In verse 70, sanctify that through thy truth, thy word is truth. Cursed be that unity for which truth must be put to the stake. And then uh, then the 19th verse, and for their sake I sanctify myself that they might be sanctified through the truth. Cursed be that unity for which truth. So people last time want to have unity, and they're, they're crucifying the truth, really. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, I don't really know how to... That kind of got me even more mixed up. Right now, you shouldn't have went that far. <laughs> oh. I was doing pretty good staying with John at uh, chapter 17. When you started going to other parts of the Bible, that was Martin saying, Luther. That was Martin Luther. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I was on, you were quoting that. I'm saying, uh huh? Uh, it's okay. I hardly know what I'm talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> but really, this is a, a, a very difficult chapter. Yes, it is. It is and difficult. these questions have made it. Made it much easier. I really like your questions. Good. I'm glad you yeah, they were tougher this week. They were tough ones. This was a challenging chapter. Oh, hi, yes, Chad, Joe, go ahead. Yeah, and, um, you know, uh, well, you know, Jake's type, you know, ecumenical type chapter this week. It's a fun, true
Yes. Craig, uh, I'd like to say something I heard a guy say one time. He said you can be open, so open-minded that your brain spill out. Yes, that's right. <laughs> it's, it's not good at all. Ms. Roberts, some thoughts you have uh, chapter 20, I mean chapter 17. Uh, I had a lot of trouble with this always. I never really understood it. So this is really my first open mm -hmm. I think, of this chapter. That's good. Yeah. I'm with you. I mean, I'm yeah. like, I always found this chapter very difficult. It is, it is a and I chapter. thought it was, you know, my brain was just too stupid to know what mm -hmm. they're talking Not about. Not too stupid, it's just the way I it's... just didn't really, I guess, devolve into it enough, and I would read it through fits like you did. <laughs> because right. I didn't know, I didn't understand it, I have to be honest. That's, I think that's a problem with uh, a lot of people uh, uh, not coming to... Uh, Bible classes and churches and stuff because they probably think the Bible's complicated mm -hmm. and they just don't bother. Yeah, they don't That's understand. They hear. believe in Christ maybe in one way, but not the. They don't feel mm -hmm. anything. Right, right. Book, book, book. You know, I think that's why a lot of people rely on priests and pastors in many of the other churches to tell them what's right and what's not right. right. Uh, why the Catholic Church says you don't even have to read scripture, uh, just obey the priest and uh, you're, you're doing good. That way you can go out and sin all week long, do anything you want, and as long as you agree with the priest, uh, you're okay. And, the same with a lot of other churches. The emergent church is uh, especially dangerous uh, in the world uh, these days, teaching, giving people wrong ideas uh, about salvation and what uh, the Bible is about, uh, misleading people, uh, terrible. And it's man's ways rather than God's way. One question to Bill. Uh, I was flipping the TV stations and get those religious channels. Yeah. And here's a guy saying... Uh, I will heal you. Uh, tell me what your problem is, and I'll heal you through Christ. <laughs> I turned around. Well, he, he has, why, why he he has Christ at his beckoning call <laughs> to do these miracles for him, <laughs> if you want to believe that. Yeah, yeah that's, what these people, that's why yeah. I think some people get turned off, too. They, uh, they're, they're afraid to... The, yeah, if you watch, uh, watch it for a little while. Because they see people on TV begging for money, and... Yeah. Uh, we'll heal you, and these people sure. are getting healed, falling down. And you watch some of these people, especially when they're singing or when they're praying, uh, when they pan uh, the audience. You see a lot of desperation there on uh, parts of a lot of those people. Which really I'm sad. gonna be honest with you. I walked by here, and I was parked my truck. I was afraid this was the same situation that was like the people on TV. But you no. know what? It's totally. For real here. Yeah. It's for real here. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I don't want to hurt your feelings. No, no, I, mean, no. I, I was a little skeptical. Because I said, yeah. wait a minute. Yeah. It would be like the people on TV. They're yeah. going to want my money. And mm. Right. You want? It? You need any money? <laughs> so, so if you want enough, give me some too. The uh, <laughs> comment, Mom, and get Jacob's coming. Well, uh, I, I'll do after everybody's done. I okay, fine, fine. Enough, so All right, Jacob, go ahead. Yes, sir, there's, uh, there's two verses in Second Peter, Second Peter 2, 1 and 2, and mm -hmm. it's verse 2 that yes. shows uh, the danger of these false teachers. But there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And verse 2, and many shall follow their pernicious ways by years apart, by reason of whom.
So you understand? You know what demonology is? Yes, I thought it was human knowledge, not no, demonology. What are demons? Uh, humanology. Demon. It, it, no, no. I, get some I think I think the word is demonology. <laughs> okay. That was mentioned. I don't hear that. No. Now, now, Joe brought up two things here. She's well. She brought up the second thing. She brought up angelology. You know what angels are, right? Angels. What are angels? Yeah. They're created beings. Oh, wait, wait. I didn't hear it. Wait. Angels are. Angels are created beings. Heavenly beings. Okay. That, 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 that that they're real have robbed the beings that, that and now demons are fallen angels. Oh, that's right. our demons are fallen angels. That's what that's what demons are. Fallen now, now Tammy, let's get your comment about chapter seventeen. All right. Please. I'll I'll start by saying this. I remember this chapter as being the high priestly prayer because um, we went to visit someone at the hospital and this was their favorite chapter mm. of the Bible. And so anyway, um, and I guess it never really dawned on me until that time. Yes. Anyway, and then I, I start reading it. And um, I chapter, or verse 3, I think really, you know, um, mm -hmm. I kind of draws a summary yes. of everything that he's prayed. He says, and this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of Philippians 3. 10, yes. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the whole idea, and then also the verse, I'm not sure where it is, if it's Matthew or Luke, where it says, um, I never knew you, you know, that when the Lord tells um, different people that, mm -hmm. you know, right. they, they say, Lord, haven't we done this and this? And I think it's Matthew. But um, they said, I, you know, get away from me, I never knew you. Mm -hmm. Or depart from me. I never knew you. Right. Anyway, and it, it, and it's interesting what everyone's been talking about because that's kind of what it seems like. I was thinking earlier, um, you know, as far as you know about this, um, you know, that they might be one, and mm -hmm. how a lot of people twist that today. Yes. But but if you take that in context of uh, verse 17 and verse three, you know, sanctify them by thy, through thy truth. Thy word is truth. You know, then there's no confusion because you have to have the truth in order to know Christ. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know Christ, then you 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 don't have salvation, mm -hmm. and you can't be one with other people that are are saved. And this is talking about Christians. It's not talking about all the people of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and now we have you know groups that you know we have you know Hindus and Muslims and you know any kind of ism coming together mm -hmm. as somehow this united religion it's like right. that's not what this is at all mm -hmm. that's not what he's praying so no, that's, right. that's all that's why I just find out on these like a CNN, CNN these mm -hmm. liberal news stations yes. mm -hmm. the, the word you, you can't even mention the word God or uh, anybody um Christianity, I mean, mm -hmm. trying to get rid of it. And yeah, so it's almost forbidden, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. so it's like an evil thing. Yes, yeah, and it's very evil. And it's very evil. It's not evil. No, 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 it's, it's, it's not evil. Yeah. But it's, it's an evil thing that they forbid it. Oh, okay. It's okay. an evil thing that they don't, that they, they, they block it. That's, what, that's what's wrong. <laughs> they block it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what's evil. What are they blocking it? Christianity. Okay. Christianity. Okay, my mind went one like, place and I lost it. Here, mine went one place. Right. <laughs> that's what I like to hear. Right? I come here, right? I learned about God. And, uh, Interesting. I can't remember. You mentioned that, that, uh, that Christian broadcasting television stations. You, no. you mentioned that? But there was interesting. I got a letter today. Well, sometime this week we got a letter from a prisoner. And um, really, a, really a tough guy, um, lifer. He's a lifer, and he was in this. Uh, it, apparently, if you're extra bad, you you, you get set to a certain wing of the prison where you only get to be you're you're in your cell for 23 hours, and you get out for one hour, and you have a choice to either go into watching television like in a type of phone booth, like a whole type of phone booth cage, 
or go into some other dog pound, well, we call it the dog pound, we call it the, just a small little confined area where you walk around. And so he chose the television, our television. And so they put him in this, 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 this small confining place where you could watch it. And they put on this Christian verse, the Christian television station. And it was what happened to be a one that was preaching the gospel. The one when he was there, the one hour out of that time when he was there in that in that in that, in that detaining cell, was it was the gospel, the message of the gospel was there. And the same thing was true the next day. And so he was able to he, he came to the same knowledge of Christ through all this. You know. Um, but it very he wrote a very thorough six page type letter about his about his his life and everything. But that that's that's what God used in this man's life, um, changing, he wrote us and asking the request in the Bible, which we're going to give out to him as soon as he sends a questionnaire back. Oh, I'd like to read that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you. Mm -hmm. Go, go ahead and, wow. um, we have the final thought, close the thought, didn't Does you? Does Anna have any thoughts? Um, I'm not sure if she has any thoughts today. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> today. She'll have a thought next week, perhaps. Okay. I, uh, should go all week without a thought? <laughs> no, no, no. Just, 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 right, just right now, at this particular uh, point in time, about chapter 17. Oh, okay. Yes. I just want to be sure I, she's I not thought... thoughtless. <laughs> no chance of that. <laughs> when, we were, when we were going through this, this came to my mind, this song. It's in the book here. Love with everlasting love, led by grace that love to know. Spirit breathing from above, thou hast taught me it is so. Oh, this full and perfect peace, oh, this transport, all divine, in the love that will not cease, I am his and he is mine. Mm -hmm. Heaven above is softer blue. For some reason, this song came right, to me. Huh? Must be some words in here. Earth around is sweeter green. Something lives in every hue Christless eyes have never seen. Birds with gladder song or flow. Flowers with deeper beauty shine. Since I know as now I know, I am his and he is mine. His forever, only his. Who the Lord and me shall part. Ah, with what a rest of bliss Christ can fill the loving heart. Heaven and earth may fade and flee, firstborn light in gloom decline. But while God and I shall be, I am his and he is mine. Somehow that song came mm -hmm. to me from this song. Yes, I sure. would have never known that song. Mm -hmm. Maybe sing it for us sometime next time. Uh, when you're around, you do it for... at the piano yes. Thursday night. Thursday night. We'll, we'll pick that one out. Yeah. We'll, we'll... Yeah, we'll have to sing that. What's the number? 128. 128. Remember, 128. Thursday night. Thursday night. I'm still trying to remember that Sunday school song. Yes. Well, they'll come back to you, maybe. They may come back to you. Yeah. All right. Any more thoughts or comments? Maybe anyone I'll has? sing it without yes. you even. Jacob, know. what's your thought or comment? <laughs> no, it was in my head uh, for, uh, for, uh, for years. I forgot all the Sunday school. I used to go to uh, in time. church. In time, I'll get her back. I'll get her back. Uh, church. church. Yes, Pray about it. Years ago. Any more thoughts or comments that anyone has about today's class. No? All right. And Jacob, you want to close the prayer today, please? Father, thank you so much we come today here with you to study your word. Lord, there's so much to learn. There's so much we don't know, but, but we know that, that you, held, you hold the truth. The truth being your word. Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, 